You know, I think one of the things that I really love about MIT is the focus that our educational network and framework really has on the you know, philosophy of mens et manis. It's not just about your mind, it's also about your hand. It's about doing science, not just for the sake of science, but for the sake of practical application on the world. And so if we're developing things in the lab that we really truly feel are going to have impact in the next few decades, we would be doing the world a great disservice if we didn't also train engineers, the next generation of engineers, on how to contribute to that field. Um, so it's something that's very important to me. I don't want to wait until a field is completely established in order to bring it into the curriculum at MIT. So we have a range of different types of classes and workshops um, that are offered to people, um, not only in the student population, but in the broader community at different stages of their careers, to come in and learn about how to build with biology, um, make some of our robots, um, give us some ideas and thoughts and feedback, and take that back into their education and their careers. This is something that I hope um, people do for other emerging areas of science as well, um, because I think it's really the only way we can ensure that the next generation of engineers can have the impact that we're hoping to have. I think the thing that gives me a lot of hope for the future is seeing how many folks at MIT and the broader STEM community are really recognizing the importance of diversity on our teams, diversity of thought and background, um, along a variety of different dimensions. And I like to think that most people are well-intentioned, that they recognize this, but we fall into these traps of always, you know, inviting people to give a talk or perhaps, you know, inviting people onto our teams or to do consulting for a local company based on a variety of different factors, many of which are how comfortable am I with this person, which often ties back to how similar is this person to me. Um, that's a very natural human instinct. But if we recognize that we do need to look beyond those kinds of obvious outward similarities, it would be great, for example, if, you know, even if most of the leaders in this field are currently men, um, they could reach out to more women and engage them in these kinds of opportunities. So I wanted to make that process a little bit easier at MIT. So that's part of the reason that I came up with the Women in Innovation and STEM Database at MIT, or WISDOM. Um, and the goal of this is to really make it a lot easier for people, whether they're looking for somebody to comment on a you know, piece uh, in the news or collaborate on a new venture or perhaps give a talk at an upcoming conference, you can just search you know, who at MIT is an expert in microfluidics and liver um, and find some of the youngest, most brilliant experts in this field. And I hope that people learn to, to use this tool and value it and keep contributing to it in the coming years. So anybody can use Wisdom. It is freely available to the public um, to sign up to be on Wisdom. Uh, we have a range of eligibility criteria, but typically we're looking for grad students, postdocs, technical associates, and research affiliates who identify as women and work at MIT.